welcome back to the playground. My name is MJ. Today I'm gonna to be reacting to Eminem and Sway's interview. It's so hard to say goodbye to these interviews, but I'm so glad that we're finally knocking it out. This is number four. It's 17 minutes long, so I'm not gonna talk forever. Just wanna say thank you to those of you who have made suggestions already for our Flashback Friday. I'm so excited to do it because we're about to take a trip back in the day. So if you guys are ready to get this reaction started, definitely give it a thumbs up and let's press play. I'm gonna switch topics because something I see, I keep hearing this reoccurring theme about how important writing is. You know, um, one of my favorite tracks on the album is featuring an up and coming star that I think uh, he, along with others that you mentioned on the album, like Sean or Jadrick. Okay, I thought, he, I thought I almost thought I was watching that video again. I was like, wasn't he just talking about some star? But I think that was a girl. But now he's talking about a he. So I'm, I'm interested to see who the guy is. Oh, yeah, Joy Lucas, uh, powerful, real powerful artist. Yeah. Um, I like y'all together on this track. Mm. You know, I think it's a good mesh yeah, between definitely. A, a veteran and somebody who's on the rise. He's so good, too. He's what is it about him that, that you like? Do y'all just love how M is, like, not a hater? Y'all notice that? Like, if you come for him, he'll come for you. And I do think it's kind of petty that he was like, you know what, since y'all want to go against me, I'm just going to show all y'all what I think about it. Even the ones that didn't come after him. Like, I do think it's petty. But I think just overall, you know, if you don't mess with him, you know, on a regular day, he really, you notice how well he speaks of other people? Like, he doesn't mind admitting how good, like, when he really thinks someone's really good. First time I saw him was, like, five years ago at, the, at one of the BDT Cyphers. And... I peeped out, he was like, he was saying a lot of lines that hmm. I saw some of me in that. Okay. But at the same time, Your protege. it was different because it was like, early on in my career, whenever I get to do a BBT cycle, I want to try to, I want to write till my shit stands out. You know mm, what I'm saying? Okay. And he stood out so much to me, I was like, yo, he's he was talking about Miley Cyrus and if I'm not mistaken, I'm pretty sure it was something like that, but he was talking about pop stars and he was doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But I'm like, yo, people are gonna remember that. I remembered it. Mm. And then I kind of started fucking when he made the, the Ross Cappuccini. Yeah. The way he did it from the two perspectives. I um, heard of that one. It was genius and it was like, it stood out. Mm. It stood out so much to me. Like, I, not only that though, like the rhymes. Like I'm listening to the rhyme. That's when I'm listening to a rapper. I'm listening to to what you're bringing to the table as far as a skill set, right? Right. That's the first thing I'm holding on. Okay, okay, I'm gonna be listening. But the fact that, like I said, like he's not compromising bars to tell his story. He still got complexity in there. That's key. That's what I was trying to say. This is what I was trying to say between that. I was saying what's the big difference between MGK and Eminem? Like even before Eminem's disc came out. I was saying that it really sounds like either he's really that simple or he was dumbing it down for the kids nowadays and it worked it worked because he had a whole team of people saying that oh he murdered Eminem but I was like these lyrics are so basic they're definitely dumbed down you know I don't know if this has to do with the fact that he has no skill or if he's really just doing that to get like commercial of fanatics I don't know but mm. good point and he's he, but he's the water ride went like he's taking you on his journey mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. I never snapped out of that journey till it was over what you know what I'm saying like and I was like yo this kid is fucking incredible hmm. y'all gotta tell me, and I'm paraphrasing I can't remember the lyrics exactly right uh, but you come in with a verse where you say I got a couple of mansions but I still don't have any matters mm -hmm. you got a couple of golf writers but to these kids it don't actually matter mm -hmm. yeah what was that about what happened to hip hop what's going on with hip hop mm -hmm. People took that line and thought you were uh, indirectly talking about Drake. No, see, here's mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. I, saw, I, mean, I saw that too. Yeah. Drake is always going to be in my good graces because he did something for for one of my daughters that I will never forget. And he will always be in my graces. Oh, uh, and I'm serious about his kids. And how about I only thought he had that one daughter because, like, Haley's the one you always hear her name. I had no idea he had another or, you know, however many he even has, but, mm. What I'm telling you with these lines is I don't know what's real and what's not hmm. at this point. That's you know always. Right? Because you hear shit about this rapper, that rapper, whatever. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you that I don't do it 
never have and never will. Okay. If I ever need a ghostwriter, mm -hmm. I need to just fucking put the mic down. Yeah, that's real. So that's my personal belief. Right. As far as anybody out here that, that does use ghostwriters, that's fine. That's if that's what you do. That's okay. Fine. Man, I'm telling you, I don't. Shade. Hip hop was the most important thing that empowered me as a kid. Um. It made me feel. I have a line where I say it made me feel tough when I wasn't. Oh, yeah. see, I, see, you guys don't understand. I don't know why I always say this. Like, if you're watching this video, you're obviously an Eminem fan, so you do understand. But like, it's more of a habit. I don't want you guys to take me like seriously. Don't take me for like, well, you know, don't be literal when I'm saying this. But. For him, I really feel like it goes deeper. Him and a lot of people, he it really goes deeper for him. It's not just, oh, record sales, or oh, how many people gonna like me, or blah, blah, blah. For him, I think it really, it, it music and hip hop to be more specific, really has like, um, it means so much more to him. It's deeper than just the numbers and like being famous and all the other stuff that people are doing, especially nowadays. So it's so interesting to see that because I know that for the person who's just coming in and is just having fun with it, they're like, what's wrong with this old man? Can he just chill? It's not that serious. But I think that if they were in his shoes, they would understand. But, you know, I guess it's all about balance, too, you know? When I was a scrawny little kid, growing up on 8 Mile, walking up the fucking block, put headphones on, and it made me feel powerful. Music does that to me, too, regardless yeah, of what I'm Mm -hmm. I mean, it was, it, was, it was like my dad. <laughs> you raised me. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag it was the only right. thing that made me empowered. It made me feel good about myself. And when I started being able to write rhymes and figured out I could do it, that's where the feeling comes from, too. Mm. Because the excitement is being able to come up with the shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That makes sense. It taught me how to throw my first punch. It gave me the confidence. Okay, mm. I'm able to throw my first punch. And Does he mean that literally or figuratively? Like, what's going on? Comment below. Because I know some of y'all know Eminem. Y'all seem to know his life story, okay? But that doesn't seem like a really obvious one. Does he mean throw a punch, literally? Okay, all right. Yeah, not only that, the fact that Proof used to beat my ass all the time oh. in the backyard boxing. And one time, he oh, beat okay. me, like, literally to the fucking ground. <laughs> and he was just like, eh, just stop. Because I kept getting up. <laughs> coming at him, but I'm like, I, but I just kept getting, getting beat up. He was fast, man. He was very quick. And uh, it's like, made me realize, like, okay, taking a punch uh, is nothing. It's nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it's not. Your fear when you're a kid is like, oh my God, if I get hit, mm -hmm. what's it going to What if they hit me in the nose and it just mm -hmm. my nose in my brain and I die? Like, kind of shit you think about. But, nah, man, hip hop, uh, hip hop, like, since its beginning, I was always under the impression that every rapper wrote their rhymes, and when you heard about me too, Tom D battling Busy B, uh -huh. it was who's bringing the best rhymes to the table. Right. You know what I'm saying? Who's gonna be able to say the best shit? Who's the cleverest and the wittiest? Right. And then years later, fast forward, you hear Easy E saying Ice Cube breaks the rhymes that I say. Mm -hmm. And Did that happen? I remember being a kid, like hearing the line, but it never really. I I, I just didn't really care. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? It, it didn't really affect the way I felt about Easy E or the way I felt about. You know, wow, you know, very. I think in all fairness, though, I think Drake. Uh, Sorry, I'm gonna cut that off. See, I I have to agree with Eminem. Like, if that's what you do, that's what you do. But I suppose rapping and I, I, I you sh we should be able to give people leeway like we do with singing. It's like, okay, if Rihanna comes out with a song that someone else wrote it, no one's making a big deal about it. But I suppose rap to me is looked at as an art. Like, that's the whole point. It's like stems from poetry. So if they're not really your words, it's like you're just doing spoken word. And even spoken word sometimes is like expected to come from you. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I'm not dogging anybody who, do, you know, who uses ghostwriters, but I just never understood the gist of it. Because if, if that's the case, then can I not become a rapper too? You get what I'm saying? Like, what's, that's what sets a person that can rap from... Do you get what I'm saying? Because it's not the same thing as like single, singing, uh, singing abilities. I get that delivery is involved as well, but like when someone else is rap rapping your stuff, it really makes it a li illegitimate a little bit in my eyes. I don't know. There's a superior writer to be able to sustain the uh, level of success he has. Yeah, I mean, he makes great music. There's not really even Is much he still making music? I didn't know that. On this Kamikaze album, I feel like 
I was pretty direct at who yeah. I was kind of talking about taking shots at, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. going at, yeah. and who I wasn't. You know what I'm saying? I wouldn't send subliminals to Drake for there'd be no reason right. for me to do that. But isn't that what I was saying earlier? I was just thinking about that. Like, why do people? That's what I was saying earlier. Like, it could be looked at as petty if someone doesn't do anything to you for you to come after them. I was referring to Drake and everybody else that you guys had suggested in the comments. But here he is clarifying that. Those were not FC subliminal, so. And I'm expressing to you that regardless of what any of these other dudes do, I have never, not even a line, not even anything. I wouldn't be able to have fun with it if I couldn't write it. Hmm. Makes sense. That's exactly you, what I'm saying. You go in really hard about the Grammys in the way, um, man, you kind of. You drag the Grammys in the mud. Mm-hmm. You talk about, um, you Fuck the Grammys. the Grammys. But you feel like you had to sell your soul to get them. Oh yeah, that and, too. Um, you didn't know if you wanted it for uh, for the recognition or the trophies. Sure. But then what's the difference? What's the difference? You know, mm-hmm. and that Grammys pretty much suck the blood of artists and nominate them, have them come to the shows, and then mm-hmm. what they do. They do it every fucking year. Yeah, and I, I I got I'm just tired of seeing it. And mm. for whatever reason, it's like they're always. Pitching this hint that you might win mm. in a year, which is a used to be a big deal. I don't right. think it's a big deal now. Um, you know, sat at home this year for the Grammys and watched Jay and Kendrick not get it. Mm. I felt like one of them should have got it. I felt like Jordan Lucas should have won a Grammy. Mm. I'm not racist. Yeah, Absolutely. I still haven't seen that film. fucking Grammy. Every year we 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 win. It was, I would be up for album of the year, and then the winner is Nora Jones. <laughs> Hold on, Eminem. We don't have time today. I think that's what I've always struggled with with the Grammys, because I'm like, you're, di- you're throwing different genres in the same melting pot, and it's really hard. How do you get to the point, who gets to decide? Like, they really should separate that stuff, you know? Like, Taylor Swift and Eminem shouldn't even be thrown in the same category, but I guess, you know, it is what it is. And I, I don't, I'm not even trying to say anything bad about her music. Mm-hmm. I just, at that point, I had never heard of her. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, hold on, hold on, Eminem. That's not what the Grammys are about. It's not a popularity contest. Okay. Okay. I'm just saying. It, I know he said he wasn't throwing shade. I'm just saying. None of my friends did either. You okay. Know what I'm so, we were, okay, whatever. And then Steely Dan. Okay, I know who Steely Dan is. I know Steely Dan back in the day. You know what I'm saying? But more than the Marshall Mathers LP... Impact, like, okay, fine. I watched 50, same shit. Mm-hmm. 50 did not win Best you New Artist at the Grammys. That was nothing bigger than... 50 at that time, that's real, yeah. Nobody since maybe, like, Snoop came out the gate mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. My first album didn't do it. Mm-hmm. I, I never honest. saw someone's first album and the, the wave happen like he had. Right. And then he doesn't get it. Yeah, but we have to ask, like, what is it based on? Because I, I, I definitely it's not just about that, like what he's saying. It can't just be that. It's not, well, how are they measuring this? Is it charts? Is it just the direct impact? I have never been into award shows. That's what's funny. I just like who I like. I don't need someone to give you a, a plaque to, to, you know, to, um, what's the word? Solidify, I guess, to legitimize you in my eyes. I'm going to like you anyway, regardless. So I've never been into, like, the Grammys or the, um, what are the, what's the other one called for actor? Oscars? I don't watch that stuff. Anyway, but I'm sure you guys do. So tell me in the comments, what what are they really basing it on? And I get up there another year, and what was it, the Eminem show? And it was like... That was a good album. Whatever. I'm fine if I lose to fucking Kanye or mm-hmm. someone that I'm like, okay, Keep it real. I respect that. Yeah. I know who that is, and Kanye yeah. has a huge following, and he's made a massive impact on music. Mm-hmm. Fine, I'm good. Which, but, and that's what I keep saying. Who says that Nora Jones didn't make an impact? I'm not trying to play devil, devil's advocate here, but I, this is why I don't think the Grammys is fair. Does that make sense? Because each one of them have their rights in their own. Does that make sense? But you, it's hard to cross the two. So just because Eminem has never heard of Nora Jones, maybe she never heard of him. Does that make sense? Sometimes people tend to stay in their bubble because that's not their cup of tea. Does that make sense? 
I know there's artists that I discover sometimes. I just discovered one, listened to Pandora, like, right before I started this video. And I was like, who is this girl? She can rap, you know? So sometimes we haven't heard of someone, but it doesn't mean they're not making waves in their own little genre. But I guess he means, like, global speaking. But I don't know. This is where it gets a little tricky. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. I'm confused, Grammys. But don't fucking get us all here to use your selling point for your fucking show and skip everybody every single fucking time. And I said, after that point in time, I was like, don't ever ask me to fucking come here again. Please do not ask me. My aunt do y'all see how raw his emotions are? He's talking like there is no camera. This is what I'm loving. This sounds like if him and Sway was just kicking back at the crib, like this is what they're talking about. Eminem, we are here for this honesty. About time, the world needs more rawness, okay? No, for a hundred million years. Never again will I fucking go to the grave. Well, That's real. Well, now, you know, I know uh, Jimmy Jam and, and, and some of the members of the board there are reaching out. Just Blaze and different folks are, are now trying to make it better. Would you ever consider, nope. you know, he said no. the board and maybe you have a vote in it? First of all, that vote is fake as fuck. That's not a real vote. That's not a real vote. They give it to who, who they want to give it to. They give it to their darlings, the fucking, oh, this got critical acclaim, but it sold two records. <laughs> like, I, it ain't about always what you sell. I get that, Vanilla Ice, I understand. You know what I'm saying? Like, <sighs> but there comes a point where when an overwhelming something comes along mm -hmm. that has this you have to respect it. impact on music, right. and you give it to fucking Lada fucking Dottie. What a fucking daddy. What a daddy. So I lied, daddy. Lottie daddy. Don't be like the daddy. Man, I, I don't know who won over Kendrick and Jay. Oh, I don't know who. I'm gonna I'm gonna rewind that. But that shit's hilarious because you could tell he really made the effort to not to not you know come up with a specific name so he wasn't shading nobody. But Sway is like kikiing on the inside. I want to hear what that person said in the background. Who won over Jay and Kendrick? What a fucking daddy. Who? What a daddy. <laughs> so I lied, daddy. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's like, man, I, I don't know who won over Kendrick and Jay. Mars is fucking incredible. Okay, see, let's keep it real. For the album, Lemonade. But this is what I'm saying though, like Bruno Mars, Jay-Z, Kendrick, how can you put all that together? They're all great in their own right. This is what I'm saying. I just, the Grammys, y'all y'all just, I need to have a seat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, you know. It's like they're so fucking tone deaf to what is actually <laughs> going deaf. on. But they're not in the sense of, oh, we're gonna get Beyonce here, we're gonna get Jay here, mm -hmm. we're gonna get, we can say all oh, these names are gonna be here. Well, when it comes to, I guarantee you, I guarantee you that the people from the Grammys was on the phone with Beyonce's people or Jay-Z's people saying this, yeah. every year that they're up for something, hinting they're gonna win mm. to get them to come. To get them to come. I fucking guarantee you. People try to show up uh, and not win it. I guess I'm gonna see you at the Grammys this year. That's way I'm yeah, done. Probably not. Probably not. Okay. Yeah. What if you're nominated? Hmm. First of all, I won't be. Mm. Okay. Because yeah. they know that I don't like them. And if I was, I wouldn't win because they know that I don't like them. One final question I want to ask you. But what if they actually make you win Eminem to prove a point? Then you're gonna be at home like, I don't care. I still don't like you. Like he said to MGK. And I'm gonna be on your side because I, I do think that they do they 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 don't have their stuff figured out. Okay, no one cares about the Grammys anymore. Song that uh, to me, man, it was probably one of the most heart wrenching songs on the project was Stepping Stone. I you know, that. and it, you tell the history of uh, D12, how it started, mm. you know, and, and what happened. D12, I forgot about D12, the group he was in, no? Oh my goodness. See, Flashback Fridays, we're about to go all the way back. Y'all just wait. And at the end of it, you said it's over. I mm. said, uh, were the members aware of that song? They were. Mm. They were. They That's were. real. Um, they, got, they got a heads up and, you know, I explained. I honestly, I have not talked to Swift and, and uh, Kanaver yet. Kanaver. About the song. They just knew it was coming down the pipe. But uh, the way I explain it is this. Proof was the glue mm. that binded us all together, yeah, right? Yeah. He did so much shit behind the scenes that I didn't even realize mm. and did things to keep us a group 
and to motivate us. Right. Mention that you guys knew all this stuff was happening, uh, but y'all never talked about it. Right. You know, you were men. You know, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the verses, but everybody was doing their solo projects. And, you know, y'all was drifting further apart. Well, that's right. what ended up happening was everybody was kind of doing their solo mm -hmm. things. But aren't you glad you did your solo project, Eminem? Okay, we needed this. We're here. It's the era. The era of Eminem. Slim Shady. We are here for it. Okay, like, you have given us decades of good music. We're not complaining. All well, the projects, mixtapes, and things like that. And did, we're doing shows. And I think the conversation now going forward is to see if there's anything we can do to help their solo careers. Hmm. You know, and we'll always be friends, man. We've always been friends. Right. So we're kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we'll always be good on that aspect, you know. And I want to help them do whatever whatever it is that their next thing is right. on the agenda. You know what I'm saying? Support it. Mixtape, album, shopping, whatever it is. Sure. When I listen to the, these stories, and I've known you since the 90s, and uh, I've known you through these ups and downs, and even if I wasn't there on your side, I was there on your team, so to speak, you know? Absolutely. Um, I'm sitting there thinking, man, this man must have went through some great therapy, because right now, where you at, you seem like you're in a comfortable place, you know who you are. But that's what I was saying, isn't that what I said? I said he's very introspective, you can really see the growth. That happens with age, but you'd be surprised. It's some 50 year old, 60 year old rappers, whatever you want to call it, that are still on the foolishness. You know, I'm not saying he was ever foolish, but you get what I'm saying. Go ahead, Sway, this is some good questions. You know what you want. Mm -hmm. Even though you got these people coming at you, you're strong enough to respond in a way that you wouldn't naturally do it. Right. Um, how did you get to this place though? Hmm. The, the digital therapy? Was it? <laughs> okay. No, I just, my well, music is therapy. You know, so <laughs> I just, uh, I don't know man, I've been coasting through and I feel like I just, mm -mm. I always, I write all the time. Okay. Whether I use it or not, you know, mm. I write all the time and that's, my best therapy is to be able to get stuff out. Just like the D12 song, it was like one of those things where, like, I know that they have things they want to say to me, and mm -hmm. I have things I want to say to them. Right. So this is kind of how I wanted to tell them, like, mm -hmm. you know, I can't wait to hear this. I love you guys, like, forever. Like I'm here. It just doing the D12 album just doesn't seem um, in this climate right now. Yeah. This climate. This climate. Yeah. He can come out the climate. It would even work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're going through enough with this climate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> with this climate. Shut up. I can't deal with Sway. I swear. I swear I can't deal with him. Right. <laughs> so, imagine D12. Let me ask you this moving forward. This will be my final question. Mm. Um, there we go. You have always, to the public, seemed like an elusive, um, introverted person. Mm. They don't always have access to it. I think that's hilarious. Okay. Right. He doesn't seem that way to me. You know, I'm not going to fucking clubs anymore. Mm -hmm. I don't do that. Right. You know what I'm saying? I'm sober. I don't. But I do a lot more and go a lot more places than people actually think I do. Hmm. I just do it under the radar, man. That's Hello. All. You, know, you know, in Detroit, we don't have paparazzi like LA. Yeah, you know, so how would you, you know? know? Mm -hmm. So I'm out a lot. Mm -hmm. It's just that people don't really see me. Right. So you know what about? Yeah, he's living his life. Living my best life. Come on, Em. I feel you. Interesting to know. Yeah, like I said, you're not going to catch me in a club fucking That's real. throwing money here. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've been through all those days and, and, and all that shit. Like, as far as, you know, I've done a whole club scene. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Been for a long time. Been there, done that. Nah, but then, uh, congratulations, man. I like the Kamikaze Project. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I think the majority of folks... You can say you love its way. It's okay. We're not going to think any less of you. You don't have to say you like the project. You can say you love it. We love it. M, we love the project. Not being so Listen, passive. You cannot deny that uh, you and an elite group of lyricists. Thank uh, you. And I'm a dude who's been in this for multiple decades. Mm -hmm. And you're at the top of my list. You Thank know, you. And, and, Thank you. And I like to see you keep flying forward regardless of, you know. Okay, I'm about to ask a really ignorant question. What happened to Sway's dreads? Didn't he at some point have dreads? Oh, God, y'all. I've been living in a bubble. Y'all think it's a joke. Of the critics have to say they've been critics they've been you've had critics since your first album mm -hmm. you know so that, that's what it's going to be but i think people would appreciate the fact that you fire back mm -hmm. that you make a stand for it yeah. um mm -hmm. and that you still 
are making, you still make the great music. So congratulations, brother. Absolutely, thank you, man. Yeah, man. Appreciate it. And listen, I'm glad I could sign that vinyl for you, man. Hell yeah. You know, if you want to, I'm gonna set up, take it home, check out some bars. Okay. You know, see that? Show that some of this. Is, you see that? Swinging Tech. Shout out to King Tech. That's my brother, partner, crime. Okay. Since hello, selfless plug. Still Swinging Tech, live forever. I mean, shameless plug. Sorry. Shay four five Monday nights. Make sure you tune in. Okay. Oh, is it Shay forty five? Shay four five, damn it. <laughs> I freaking love it. Y'all know yesterday I was like shade 93.5. I was just making stuff up because I say he was throwing shade. I didn't even realize that was legit the name of the um, radio station that he works at, you know, that Eminem owns or whatever. I was just saying shade 45, like, you know, just like being, he was being shady. But turns out that was actually, that would make sense because Slim Shady, shade, okay, anyway. I didn't catch that in the beginning. I was just talking. But yeah, interesting stuff, man. I definitely enjoyed this journey. Thank you guys for insisting that I react to three and four I definitely feel like I know M a little bit more now you know like on an intimate level it's like sometimes when you can learn a person you know when you know their character or you're learning things from their perspective it really allows you to get them even as an artist or as whatever it is that they do so like whatever I react to now whether it's like something from the past or something in the future I feel like I'll be able to take a lot more from it because I know his side of the story if that makes any sense so shout out to you guys for insisting that I do it if you enjoyed this reaction, definitely give me a thumbs up. Don't forget to comment below other videos that you'd like for me to react to. If you're not part of our family, definitely subscribe. We'd love to have you. We are having tons of fun in the playground. I'll see you guys manana. Bye.